Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on a topic. Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Now, family, this can go both ways. He's not going to be unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We know according to scripture, he told us that he have set a plumb line in the midst of his people Israel. So whether our works and our deeds were good or whether our works and our deeds are evil, he's telling us through this teaching that he is not unrighteous to forget our work and labor of love. So the question is, where is our work and our labor of love? Where is it sitting at? Is it sitting before the most high God of Israel and following the ways of Christ and obeying his spirit Christ? Or is it before the ancient and honorable and following the ways of Satan? So that's the question. So it's my prayer that you will gain some clarity in this teaching and be something you can maybe even meditate on and just something to help you along the way, just encourage you. And if you're on the fence or if you're not sure what side of the plumb line you're on, hopefully through this teaching, you'll be able to get a clear understanding and make a clear decision of what side of the plumb line you want to be on. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching, and it's my prayer that someone would be richly edified. And so I'm going to pivot and start in the book of Amos, just to back up the statement I made about the plumb line. I was just led to go here. It's not in my teaching, but we're going to go and start here. In Amos chapter 7 and verse 7, he says, Thus he showed me, and behold, the Creator stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Spirit of God said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Creator, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more and the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. So we see here that it's a plumb line that is set in the midst of his people Israel, the house of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. And the teacher said, Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Whether it be good, whether it be evil. So let's keep going. Let's go to Psalms 104, starting at the first verse. It says, bless the spirit of God, O my soul. O spirit of God, my guide. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. It's that covering, the spirit, his covering of his wisdom and his knowledge, his dominion, his power and authority over everything that was created. It's clothed with honor and majesty. 
who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain, who led the beams of his chambers in the waters, who make it the clouds, his chariots, who walk it upon the wings of the wind, who make it his angels, his ministers, his messengers, spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou covered is it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sent it the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. He's starting to get in some spiritual talk now. To air, to uh, they give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. So even as we flip this verse ten spiritually, we know these springs is knowledge. Just think of springs of water. He's sending his knowledge into the valleys which run among the hills around among his people they give drink to every beast of the field even the wild asses quench their thirst the ones that's unlearned the ones that's unskillful in the word the ones that's babes the ones that's acting as gentiles the ones that are heathens, even the wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watered the hills. He's given knowledge to the hills from his chambers, giving waters to his people. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He calls it the grass to grow for the cattle. He calls it this knowledge to grow for his people. The herb for the service of men, that knowledge that's gonna be in his vessels and his servants for the service of men to teach them in the way, to keep them in the way to feed them with knowledge and understanding that he may bring forth food, that he may bring forth bread, that he may bring forth knowledge out of the earth and wine and doctrine that make it glad the heart of man and oil, this wisdom to make his face to shine, that anointing in bread and knowledge which strengthens man's heart. See, what's going to strengthen our heart is the word of God, family. We're looking at these scriptures with our spiritual eyes. The trees of the spirit of God are full of sap. His people who he made a covenant with, the ones who he gave his law to, he placed it in their heart and he placed it in their mind. They are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he have planted. The same ones that was planted in the Garden of Eden. These trees, these trees which are people. He said the trees of the Spirit of God are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he have planted. 
Let's go ahead to Genesis chapter one. Let's get some more. Genesis 1 and 29. He said, and Yahweh said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. Now we know this is a spiritual verse and not a carnal verse. Most people that look at this carnally will only look at the plants and the herbs that's in the land that you can use for medicine and you can use for healing and for teas and, and things to make you healthy. But we flipping all things spiritual. So we already know these trees are talking about people. So he said, and Yahweh said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. He upon the face of all the earth because they are scattered. 12 tribes that are scattered. Every tree and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. So this fruit of the tree that's yielding seed is his word that he placed in them, his law, his doctrine that he placed in them. He said, to you it shall be for me. It shall be for doctrine. It shall be for learning. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. We know we are children of the light and not of darkness. We are children of the light and not of the night. He said, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. So I'm giving you every green herb, the one that has my knowledge. The trees that's got my knowledge and they're, be they are bearing and yielding seed, meaning yielding this word, it shall be for you, for meat, for doctrine, for learning, and it is so. It was so. Verse 28. And Yahweh blessed them. He gave them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He blessed them Bless who? Every tree, every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, it shall be for meat, for doctrine. Why? Because he blessed them. He gave them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. In other words, you share my word and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, all of these other nations, and over every living thing that move it upon the face, upon the earth. So now let's hit Genesis five and let's see what, who these trees are genesis 5 1 and 2 it said this is the book of the generations of adam in the day that yahweh created man in the likeness of yahweh made he him male and female created he them and blessed them and he gave them wisdom knowledge and understanding and called their name adam in the day when they, male and female, were created. So let's look again, the trees that he gave us as yielding seed for meat. See what they're gonna be doing. Exodus 23 and verse 20. He says, behold, 
I sent an angel before thee. I sent a messenger before thee. I sent a minister, a servant before thee. One of these trees that's yielding seed, they're yielding fruit. It's a green herb tree to keep thee in the way. This is the reason why the scripture said it shall be to you for me. It's going to be to you for doctrine because they're going to keep you in the way. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, meaning your forgetfulness. For my name, meaning my way, is in him. But if thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. So he's letting us know this green tree that's going to be bearing seed. They're going to be keeping you in the way by the word of God. So let's look at this parable to get a, a better understanding here, a little silhouette picture. Matthew in chapter 13 and verse 31. Let's look at this parable. It says, another parable put he forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and become it a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches there. So we see that this tree And we'll even take it back to this seed, this grain of mustard seed, which a man took, sold in his field, indeed is the least of all seeds. You to write that down, the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, meaning it's flourishing. It is the greatest among all of them. And become it, a tree, and it's a tree that's so likable, and say, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches there. This is the same silhouette picture of what we just read in Genesis chapter 1, 29 and 30. He says, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, for doctrine. All of these birds are gonna to wanna to come and lodge in the branches. He said, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, when there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So we clearly see that those birds of the air wanted to come and lodge in the branches of this tree because this is where the meat was at. This is where the doctrine, this is where the wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding is. Even the birds, and we know those birds is still talking about people because even here in verse 30, the fowl of the air is talking about people. He's speaking a spiritual language. So let's get some more. Psalms 104 in verse 17. He says, where the birds make their nests, as for the stark, the fir trees are her house. Mm. They want to go where it's pretty and green. The leaves look ripe. 
They want to go where the knowledge is. He said that high hills are a refuge for the wild goats. <laughs> the ones that's, the high hills is the one that's skillful in the word. The ones that's on strong meat. He even tell us in his word, the strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak. So the high hills are a refuge for the wild goats. The ones that's hard-headed or either just unlearned. In the rocks for the coonies. Let's get some more. Deuteronomy in chapter 7, verse 6. And keep in mind when he was talking about the grain of, of the mustard seed was the least of all of the seeds. He said, for thou art an holy people unto the spirit of God thy God. The spirit of God thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto him above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The spirit of God did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. Just as that mustard seed is the fewest of all seeds, house of Israel, he's telling us that we were the fewest of all people. He said, but because the spirit of God love you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have the spirit of God brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, meaning king of sin, the king of the house of disobedience. Deuteronomy chapter four and verse five. He said, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the spirit of God, my God, commanded me that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them as the spirit of God, our God, is in all the things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that have statues and judgments, doctrine and teaching so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thine heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Spirit of God, thy God in Horeb, when the Spirit of God said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse nine. He says, know therefore that the spirit of God, thy guide, he is Yahweh, the faithful God, which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repair them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him 
he will repay him to his face. See, family is very, very important that we get this thing right because he done warned us in the beginning that he have set a plumb line in the midst of his people Israel. And he's telling us in his teaching, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, whether it be good or whether it be evil. He say, no, therefore that the spirit of God, that guide, he is God, the faithful God, which keep it covenant. He's going to keep this agreement that he made with our forefathers in mercy with them that love him, meaning them that promise him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations and repair them to ones that choose to worship the ancient and honorable. He repaired them that hate them to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. Now, family, it's our job as a servant of the Most High to show you all of this contract that's in this book of remembrance. The good, the bad, and all in between, because it's all his righteous judgment. He's not just going to stay in the New Testament and show you one side. We're going to show you both sides. So he's telling us in verse 9 and 10 that he's an equal opportunity to rather we doing our works in labor of love for good, or whether we're doing it for evil. So let's get some more information because he's giving us fair warning of how he is and how he go about handling his business. Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 10, he says, many, many, not one, not a little bit, not some, many, and this goes for everyone across the board, across the nations. He says, many pastors, pastors that come from the line of Shem, pastors that come from the line of Ham, pastors that come from the line of Japheth, Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion on the foot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. He's telling us what the pastors have done. Teaching things they ought not be teaching. He said they have made it desolate. Desolate of what? desolate of the truth. He made them desolate of the knowledge of God because they're teaching them another doctrine, teaching them about another Jesus, and teaching them about another God. So they have made it desolate. And being desolate, lacking knowledge, it mourned unto me. The whole land, the whole nation is made desolate. The whole house of Israel is desolate because no man led to heart. The spoilers are come upon all high places. So my people that are called by my name, they are made desolate because the spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness. We're in this wilderness right now. He said, for the sword of the spirit of God shall devour from the one end of the land even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. Uh-oh. See, it's many, 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 many pastors out there. Men and women. 
that choose to do this type work. And they have all different motives and reasons for the work that they are doing. And he's telling us by way of precepts that many, 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 many pastors have destroyed his people. Kept them down by not telling them the truth. They hid the apocrypha from them in this country, United States of America, they only gave them 66 books. A lot of these other countries always had the apocrypha in their 1611 King James Bible. He said, they have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion. My people that's called by my name a desolate wilderness. Desolate of the truth. Every one of them going to have to answer for this. Most High is saying, the sword of the Lord shall devour from the one end of the land, even to the other end of the land, no flesh shall have peace. Let's turn on the TV to some of these televangelist teachings and See how much they're telling you about you're going to have peace and you just got to think it in your mind and telling you all these things to promise you peace. And the word is saying no flesh shall have peace. You didn't come here to bring no peace. He came to bring a sword. Jeremiah chapter 6 and Verse 14, he said, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. It ain't no peace. Stop telling lies behind the pulpit. It's not going to be no peace. That's why you see the world steady getting worse and worse. You lying to them and promising them peace. Matter of fact, let me pivot for a minute. Let me, let me hit another precept I like to go to. Let's go Matthew chapter 10 for a second. We'll come right back. Matthew 10 and verse 34. He says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And he just got through telling us his sword is going to go from one end of the land to the other end of the land. This is what he sent. His sword. He did not send peace. Someone telling you he sent peace, they're lying to you. Not in this world. He say they saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Verse 15, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. He's talking about these pastors that's teaching and telling you a whole bunch of lies that make you feel good about yourselves and what you are doing and what they are teaching you. He said, they're going to fall. He said, at the time that I will visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Spirit of God. Thus said the Spirit of God, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way. See, 
Some of you are only New Testament only preachers. You only want to stay in the New Testament. You don't want to cover the whole entire book. He's telling us and ask for the old paths where is the good way. You're going to have to seek you out the entire book of the Lord and read. Matter of fact, let's pull that one. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's pull that precept and we'll come back. Chapter 34 and verse 16. He says, seek ye out of the book of the spirit of God and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded and their spirit it have gathered them. See, a lot of you, you don't want nothing to do with the law. You don't study the law. You don't teach the law. The only thing you want to do is teach the New Testament. And the majority of you want to go run to Paul. And you want to go into Paul letters and try to teach a doctrine telling us that the law was done away with and you're lying through your teeth. And you don't even realize that 85 to 95% of what everything Paul is Sin in his letters is all law. Matter of fact, let's pull that. Let the precepts do the work. You're going to discredit the law. You're going to talk about the law and say it's done away with, and you're going to use Paul to try to justify it. Romans 7 and 1. He said, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So Paul is being straight up. You're going over there running into Paul letters and you don't know it's a stumbling block and a booby trap sitting right there to catch you up when you get on the wrong side of the plumb line. You lying on Paul letters. He didn't hide it from you because I'm showing you the verse. He said, no, ye not, brethren. You beloved ones, for I speak to them that know the law. So if you want to study Paul and you want to teach Paul, you need to go to those first five books and get solid in the law. Paul will never contradict the law in his letters. Let's go back to Jeremiah. Let's finish that up. Chapter 6, and I believe we left off at verse 16. He says, Thus said the Spirit of God, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, those first five books. Where is the good way? And walk therein, walk according to the law, according to the covenant, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But guess what? But they said, we will not walk there. Think of all of the many pastors that said, no, we don't have to worry about the law. We don't have to worry about the covenant because Jesus paid it all. He did it for you. He did it for me. And you don't have to do nothing but only believe. This is what they've been getting away with for decades. In decades, in decades. The word of God is right, family. And we're going to have to stick to the precepts of the Most High. We clearly see the judgment that he's speaking against these many, 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 many pastors that have made his people desolate of the truth. Jeremiah 12 and 13. He said, they have sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Spirit of God. Thus said the Spirit of God against all mine evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Mm. 
Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. And it shall come to pass after that I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them and will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And it shall come to pass if they will diligently learn my ways, learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, meaning to swear by my way. Christ say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The Spirit of God living. As they taught my people to swear by Baal, then shall they be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, said the Spirit of God. So he's being crystal clear about what he's going to do. Jeremiah 3 and 12. He says, go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, return thou backsliding Israel, said the Spirit of God, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, said the Spirit of God, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, thy acts of sin, that thou hast transgressed against the Spirit of God thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, said the Spirit of God. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Spirit of God, for I am married unto you. And I will take you, one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And see, we're going to get a clear example of what these pastors that's after the heart of the Most High should be doing. Give you a clear distinction between those in Jeremiah chapter 12 and these. First Peter 5 and 1, he said, the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of Yahweh which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. So he don't want us to be rulers. He want us to be an example. He don't want us doing this thing for money, filthy lucre, and all of these things, trying to boss the people around. He said, no, you're doing this of a ready mind. You giving them counsel, you counseling them on this contract, this covenant agreement that he made. This is their job. Being an example to the flock. He said, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, which is Christ, ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For Yahweh resisted the proud and gave a grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yahweh, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. So he's telling us, 
what we should be doing at all times. Never letting our guard down. Luke chapter 11 and verse 35. He says, take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. See, we don't want that dark light because that dark light is full of sin. We want that light which is in us to be bright, a bright shining light, this word. We want it to be trimmed and burning all in our lamp, trimmed and burning bright, ever so bright, not in darkness. He's showing us a difference in his elders, his pastors, and those others that's on the other side of the plumb line. Micah chapter three and verse five, he says, thus said the spirit of God concerning the prophets that make my people hear, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that put it not into their mouths. They even prepare war against him. Therefore night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. See, that's that dark light again. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. These same prophets, pastors, and teachers, yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of your house. But truly, I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression, his forgiveness, and to Israel his sin. Hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment, meaning what? That hate judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the spirit of God and say, is not the spirit of God among us. None evil can come upon us. Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field and Jerusalem shall become heat and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. See these many pastors that made his people desolate of the truth. They have a lot of accountability that they're gonna have to answer to. The judging for reward and teaching for hire and divining for money. See, this is the reason why the teaching said, Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. See, whether it was good or whether it was evil, we all gonna have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged for the deeds and the works that was done in our body whether they was good or whether they was evil. I have to always keep this in mind. Jeremiah chapter two and verse eight. He said, the priest said not, where's the spirit of God? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walk after things that do not profit. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, said the Spirit of God, and with your children's children will I plead. <laughs> and when he say 
I'm going to plead. He's meaning he's going to bring that sword. That's what he's saying. Isaiah 56 and verse 10, he says, his watchmen, his pastors, his prophets, his teachers are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They are destitute of the truth and they're teaching the most highest people and making them desolate, desolate of the truth. The blind leading the blind. He say, yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. See, I done noticed even here on YouTube and also in churches, you got a lot of people calling their pastors the shepherd. They even acknowledge him as shepherd, shepherd so-and-so, shepherd this and shepherd that. And the Bible tell you there's only one good shepherd and that's Christ. So he's telling us about all the other shepherds. They cannot understand a really greedy dogs which can never have enough. He's being crystal clear as he's speaking to us the beginning of this Sabbath day. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse, 10, uh, verse 13, he says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. They're going to put on long robes. They're going to put on suits with collars. They're going to put on a clergy attire. They're going to do all these things to look the part, dress the part. Now he said they had nothing but false apostles and deceitful workers, greedy dogs which can never have enough, shepherds that cannot understand. Verse 14, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. He's telling us, don't marvel when these things happen. Isaiah chapter nine and verse 15. He said, the ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people caused them to err. And they, meaning the people that are led of them, are destroyed. See, this is the sad part. And a lot of you are going to sit right there and stay right there because why? It's a family church. All your family is there. See, let me share a little bit with you. I'm, I was born and raised in a family church myself. Never been nowhere else. That's all I knew. But I, too, had to travel the same road that our father Abraham had to travel. And the Most High told him that he had to leave out of the land of his kindred. The land of the Chaldees. His family was worshiping another God. And he obeyed the voice. He was called a friend of God. A faithful servant. What about you today? 
are you literally staying to that building or that place of worship solely because all of your family is there? Because you are comfortable with the family church, but you're not getting feed the truth. You, the scriptures telling us many pastors have made us people desolate in a desolate wilderness. Or are you going to do like our forefather Abraham when he was told to get thee from your kindred? You're going to obey the voice of the Most High and learn his way, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and deal little. See, this is a journey that all of us are going to have to make. I, too, had to make this journey. So he said, the ancient and honorable, he is the head and the prophet that teacher lies is the tale for the leaders of this people cause them to error. You would rather stay in error just to be around your family, to please your family. Some of you may already have positions or you promised positions on the way to come and you rather stay there for the position and be in error. He said, and they that are led of them are destroyed. So he's telling us in a nutshell, the pastors and those followers, both alike, it's going to be destroyed. And we're going to get some detailed information right in scripture. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 16, he said, for the ungodly that denied to know thee were scourged by the strength of thine arm, thy power, with strange rings, hails, and showers were they persecuted that they could not avoid and through fire were they consumed. See, family, all it is can be avoided if you will only hearken unto the voice of the Most High. Come out of her, my people. All of this can be, it can be to where you don't have to go through this. You would only listen. He said they were, were they persecuted that they could not avoid it. There's no avoiding all of this right here. There's no avoiding this. He said, and through fire were they consumed. Let's get some more. Revelations chapter 20. And verse 14 and 15, he said, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. See, it's bad enough to go to hell, but then hell got somewhere to go to. Hell is going to be cast in the lake of fire. This is that part that we just read that they couldn't avoid it. He said, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Some deep stuff, family. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 17. He said, for which is most to be wondered at, the fire had more force in the water, just think the lake of fire, it had more force in the water that quenched all things. For the world fight it for the righteous. For some time, the flame was mitigated that it might not burn up the beast, that it might not burn up the people that were sent 
against the ungodly. But themselves might see and perceive that they were persecuted with the judgment of God. And at another time, it burned it even in the midst of water, in the midst of the lake of fire, above the power of fire, that it might destroy the fruits of an unjust land, meaning an unjust people, an unjust nation. Instead, whereof thou fedest thine own people with angels' food. That knowledge from up on high. And did send them from heaven bread prepared with their labor, sending them that knowledge able to content every man's delight and agreeing to every taste. So it's going to content your heart and you're going to be agreeing as you're learning. He said, for thy substance declared thy sweetness unto thy children and serving to the appetite of the eater tempered itself to every man's like. Hebrews, we'll hit chapter six, start at verse seven. He says, for the earth, which drinketh in the rain, that come it off upon it, being in the people which drink it and receive it, this knowledge that coming off upon it and bringing forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed. So they bringing forth fruits or the spirit meat for them by whom it is taught, receiving blessing, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from Yahweh. But that which bear thorns, they go to the other side of that, plumb line and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. We just got to getting detailed information in wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and in revelations chapter 20 for how this is going to go down for those thorns and those briars, those thorns and those briars are those heathen. Those ones that's acting as Gentiles, those ones that's ungodly, those ones that's worshiping and sacrificing unto devils and not unto God. He said, not unto cursing whose end is to be burned. But beloved, you promised ones, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Though we thus speak, for Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, meaning toward his way, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So if you're doing things that's pleasing in our sight of the most high, he's not going to forget your work and labor of love. Individually, you might not even be a teacher, but you are a follower of Christ, male or female, it doesn't matter. And you help to wake someone up. You help to feed them some truth. To show them some truth so they can get on the path of following Christ. You help point them in the right direction to where they can be fed by one of his servants. 
you did your part in sharing this knowledge. He said, for Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his way, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. You need to continue. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. For when Yahweh made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. When Yahweh willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for Yahweh to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even salvation, talking about Christ, made in high priest forever after the order of male Chesedek, in 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse 8, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. We've clearly showed you the vessels that he's resting in. Teaching you things to make you desolate of the truth. Teaching for hire, judging for reward and divining for money. He's going around seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast, in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But Yahweh, but the, the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by the anointed one, salvation, Yahweh shall the Messiah, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So family, I hope and pray that someone got something from this teaching. Because we clearly see According, whether they be good or whether it be evil. Yahweh is not unrighteous to forget your work in labor of love. So let's just make sure 
our calling and our election is sure. And let's make sure we choose wisely what side of the plumb line that we want to be on. And I'm going to go back to the same scripture that I open up with. We're going to close out with the same scripture. Amos 7 and 7. He says, well, Amos 7 and 8, he says, I'm going to start right here. And then it says, then said the creator, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. This is what we need to know. It's already sitting there, a plumb line. You got the law that's over your mind and you got the law that's over your flesh. It's a plumb line. He say, I will not again pass by them anymore. In the high places of Isaac, these ones that's got it, the, the word placed in their hearts and in their mind shall be desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel, the people of Israel shall be laid waste. We already showed you why, because many pastors are making them desolate. He said, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. So family, I hope and pray that this teaching was clear to you. I know it was a lot of spiritual understandings that was given, but we have to learn that the most high God of Israel speaks a spiritual language. And this is the reason why he told us that he's going to speak to us in precepts. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned up from the milk and drawn from the breast. And precept must be upon precept. Line must be upon line and it must be here little and dear little. So family, I'm going to say Shalom to everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. Meditate on his word. Just keep it holy. And I'm going to say a shalom until we meet again. Shalom.